You notice when I came to that bit of the tune, I went down. Uh, because I can't go. Semitone above that, because it's, it's not there. If I could do overblows, I could do that note. And this eight-year-old kid said to me, when you played work song, I said, yes. He said, did you play the tune exactly right? I said, I played the tune exactly right, including the correct flattened fifths, which the composer wrote. He said, you went down an octave at one point. I said, yes, just for one phrase. He said, can't you do overblows? <laughs> And he was, yay high. <laughs> so I'm going to learn overblows eventually. There's some freaks with the, do you talk about the chromatic note, but there's this freak with the diatonic, uh, Levy. Howard Levy, he plays all the tunes with the diatonic harmonica. He's so talented, he didn't use the slider. <laughs> he didn't need it. <laughs> you hear him and you think, you can't believe your ears. You want to shoot him. <laughs> Here is Howard Levy, and at last, a version of Amazing Grace that has Amazing Grace notes in it. started about 20 years ago to discover how the harmonica really works. And we have a whole new way of playing the harmonica and this is kind of a trend that started about 20 years ago with Howard Levy. We as a manufacturer, we have to, you know, uh, go along with this uh, development. And so uh, now at this point uh, we understand how the harmonica really works, really uh, um, we really understand what, what things can be done to make a better instrument out of it. And the players themselves feel the same obligation. Brendan Power keeps reinventing the harmonica as he goes along. The chromatic's got this kind of um, a reputation for being a little bit more straight than the diatonic. Um, I mean, people like Stevie Wonder play the chromatic and, and make it sound really sexy, but um, it can, in, you know, intrinsically, the way it's made or the way it comes from the shops, it's, you can't bend as many notes on it. Little Stevie Wonder, as he was then, was one of the first in pop to make a wholehearted feature of the harmonica. You can alter the chromatic to make it more, more bendable and, um, and more expressive so for me that's my main interest is um, you know fooling around with the chromatic and trying to make it more more um, bluesy and sexy and sort of expressive that's with this right but without this <laughs> But it's it's not clean, but it's funky. 
Basically, it's purely arbitrary. I mean, the Germans came out with this so-called Richter tuning back in the in the late 19th century, and then there's a, there's a thing called solo tuning on the chromatics. But these are purely arbitrary. I mean, you can change them radically for um, for uh, um, basically what you do is you um, if you want to lower the pitch of a reed, you add some weight to the end of it, which um, can be most people would use solder, and you can drop you can drop them by a huge amount, even an octave or whatever. Brendan has customised some harmonicas with new tunings in pursuit of musics from different cultures, for example, Irish folk tunes. So that's um, sort of, yeah, altered for Irish music. Or you can play um, Bulgarian music on them, or sort of Arabic sounds. <laughs> so on so really um, if you have a you know you play the different the two different types um, and well certainly for me it makes it easier and have them in different tunings you can cover quite a you know a range of different kinds of music <laughs> And all the time, the grand old central tradition continues. Jim Hughes was taught by Tommy Riley, and young Philippe Achille is a pupil of Jim's. You've gone further than any pupil that, that I've ever had. And, I mean, to get into the Young Musician of the Year is something. To win the Open World Championships is something else again. Uh, and he's just 18, and I hadn't even begun to play the harmonica when I was 18. <laughs> is a, a really wonderful experience and I'm glad that I'm at the end of my career and I feel that it's all there now. I feel that I've done my work as it were because the harmonicas have been my life for, well, since I was 18. If I can make people happy through my music then that's what I'm going to do. I mean, I don't, I don't quite see it. In, I mean, I do realise this kind of weird kind of like responsibility thing going on like you know great power become, becomes great responsibility or something but I'm just a musician I'm just a guy who likes playing music and I'm just going to continue doing it for as long as God lets me. Well he's, he's a little genius I uh -huh. and there's a future of the harmonica right there. In fact, the harmonica is still uniting generations and styles all over the world. The legendary Tuesday afternoon sessions in New York City, featuring the likes of Charlie Layton and William Gallison, have never been filmed before. I was playing on 57th Street with a guitarist for a few years after I got out of college where I made my living playing music on the street. And that's where I actually became a decent harmonica player, just by playing eight, ten hours a day. And one day this very handsome gentleman walked up and said, uh, he said, you sound good. I said, thank you. And that was Charlie Layton. And he said, uh, we get together on... Uh, Tuesdays you should come by. Somehow or other, three of us decided that it, would, might, it might be a good idea to meet one day a week and try and jam, see if we couldn't jam and play, right? And that's exactly what we did. And that's close to 30 years ago, I guess, oh. right now. <laughs> yeah. I've been coming up, up here Probably almost just about every week. I would say I'm, I've made 90%, 92% of the Tuesdays for the last nine years, and it's always been a fabulous 
It's always been a pleasure aesthetically. It's always been a great learning experience. I've learned so much from these three guys. And I, I say without exaggeration, um, you're looking at four of my favorite harmonica players in the world right in this room. It's been invaluable for the art form of harmonica to have guys like this pioneering it and then sharing the knowledge is something that you don't get on all instruments. The harmonica players, because we haven't had the, the, you know, the books and the schools that, so we share with each other, which a lot of other instrumentalists don't do, and, and we, we learn quite a bit from doing that. Gregoire Moray and uh, Stanley Harper and Blackie Schachter, all the top harmonicas, the Scro brothers, they are all here for one time or another to come to the Tuesday, the Tuesday Jams. So this has become an institution. Friendship uh, is the most interesting thing to me. I you know, I mean, we all like each other, and but uh, the important thing that, that, that we think is, is that they play harmonica. The harmonica was invented as a toy and was never really expected by its inventors to make any particularly great music. And to take something like that and play something really beautiful and meaningful using all, all the values of music, rhythm and melody and phrasing, articulation and tone, and bring that to life on the harmonica, there's something very gratifying about that. It would be like making a movie on a little Super 8 camera that you find in a junkyard and making a really good movie. The harmonica is a piddly little instrument with tiny little brass reeds, but there is something about the harmonica that makes it very special. So if you get a chance to put a harmonica in somebody's Christmas stocking, go on, do it. <laughs>